Let me start out by unfortunately addressing the continuous rumors, or to put it in proper perspective, the wishful thinking that I've run out of things to speak about regarding my personal experiences. I want to remind viewers, weigh the words of trolls and insignificant clowns. As the only audience of clowns are circus goers, and trolls represent self-disappointment in the highest form. I, without question, will be speaking about personal experiences. However, I'll pick the time to do that of my choosing. In the meantime, I'll post videos that interest me. If a video doesn't interest certain people, that's fine. In addition, as far as the saying for intelligent people, remember, only the unintelligent will find something to say about that. Okay, onward and upward. What I'd like to do is deep dive into Michele Sindona, Roberto Calvi, the P2 Masonic Lodge, and the Mafia, all who were tied together. Those familiar are aware of all the moving parts, so covering those mentioned will take place in a series of videos. For those unfamiliar, you'll be surprised at what transpired, and more importantly, who was involved. In the spring of 1969, a Mercedes pulled up to the gate of Vatican City the headquarters of the Roman Catholic Church. The Vatican's encased in a city ruled by the Holy See, a government of the church, so to speak, one that's headed by the Pope. And keep in mind, anyone wishing to enter or leave Vatican City after hours, which I believe is by 6 p.m., needs special written permission to do so. Nonetheless, in the spring of 1969, at 11.30 p.m., Michele Sendona, the driver of the Mercedes, did not need to produce any paperwork, nor was his ID checked. Sindona had caught Blanche as far as the Swiss guards were concerned. His visit that day regarded a secret meeting with Pope Paul VI. In 1955, an archbishop, Giovanni Montini, requested a favor from Sindona. He needed his help as he was being prevented from saying mass at factories in Milan by communists. Sindona reached out to the factory owners, many of whom were his clients, and thus started a friendship between Michele Sindona and the Archbishop, who would become Pope Paul VI. Michele Sindona was a tax attorney, and more relevant, a banker, one who partnered with the Vatican in business ventures and banks in Italy and Switzerland. More significant was Sindona's connection to the Mafia, as well as the infamous Masonic Lodge Propaganda Due, or better known as P2. Pope Paul chose Sindona to manage the Vatican's finances, despite the Catholic Church forbidding Catholics to become Freemasons. Over and above that was the Church's strong stance against the Mafia. It was known Sindona had connections to the Sicilian Mafia, as well as their counterparts in America, and we'll get more into what he did for them. Sindona's mafia ties were also known to Italian law enforcement. For instance, a 1967 Interpol memo regarding the mafia, banks, and international drug trafficking had Sindona's name at the top of that list. The relationship between Pope Paul and Michele Sindona was cemented in or about 1963, when Sindona handled the Vatican problem. During this time, Sindona had a reputation with successful wins against the tax authorities. The Vatican owed in the neighborhood of $720 million in unpaid taxes. Technically, Sindona didn't get the old taxes squashed, but kept the tax authorities at bay until he came up with a plan, which is why he entered Vatican City in the spring of 1969. He explained his strategy with the Pope, which was moving the Vatican's finances out of Italy and into a tax-free euro-dollar market via offshore tax corporations. The Pope handed Sindona a signed contract, one endorsed by himself, granting him complete control over the Vatican's money, which consisted of billions of dollars. It was at that moment Michele Sindona officially became the Pope's banker. By the age of 18, Michele Sindona won a scholarship to the University of Messina and earned a degree in tax law in 1942. During the invasion of Italy in 1943, Sindona was taking food supplies from inland areas and delivering them to Messina. He was able to do this with a little help from Vito Genovese, who was hiding in Italy to avoid murder charges back in the United States. 
By the war's end, Sedona opened up a small business specializing in tax and corporate law. By 1948, he was married with one child and one on the way and moved his family to Milan, where he continued his practice. And by studying market trends, he began giving financial advice to some of Milan's richest families. As a result, he was introduced to influential people at the Vatican, mostly bishops. Over the years, Sindona began giving advice to Vatican members and eventually became partners with the Vatican on stocks where they had a 60-40 split. In November 1957, an infamous summit took place at the Grand Hotel de Palms in Palermo. Meeting that day were members of Sicilian and American Cosa Nostra, as well as Michele Sindona. His assignment would be to reinvest the profits from heroin sales, as well as laundering the money. Everyone was aware of Sendona's ability to move large amounts of money in and out of Italy, avoiding taxation. By 1960, Sendona would take over a bank, which he purchased with the mafia's drug money. His reputation as a young, intelligent tax attorney reached the ears of anyone of importance, including politicians and private entrepreneurs, which started the rumor mill that not only was Sendona backed by the Vatican, but the mafia as well. Sindona would eventually meet Licio Gelli, a name of great significance. There are numerous references of Licio Gelli being connected to the mafia and possibly controlling it behind the scenes. The Freemasons, who many of the mafia bosses were known to be a part of, was said to have had the final word in mafia decisions. For those of you who are not familiar, let me give you some background. He was born in Pistoia, Italy, which is the capital of Tuscany. And by the age of 17, Gelli left school to fight the Italian fascists in support of Benito Mussolini. When Mussolini was toppled, Gelli fled to Argentina. He returned to Italy sometime in 1964 and joined the Masonic Order. And soon after, he would be negotiating multi-million dollar contracts. By 1966, Gelli reformed a Masonic Lodge named Propaganda Due, which was founded in the 1800s and he would become Grand Master of that lodge sometime in 1974. As a result, he turned P2 into one of the most powerful and secret organizations. Back then in Italy, secret societies were forbidden and illegal, and Freemasonry was permitted only if each lodge disclosed the names of its members. However, the P2 lodge never disclosed any of its members' names. Jelly had the P2 lodge split into two factions, with one faction not knowing the identities of members in the other. Michele Sindona and Licio Gelli would form a very close friendship despite their dissimilar personalities. Let me quickly mention the Super Thanks icon found beneath the video in the three dot dropdown for anyone who liked to show appreciation for videos like this. Michele Sindona became a Freemason in 1964 during a ceremony. And thereafter, he was known among lodge members only as 1612 and was a member of the P2 Lodge. Following his membership, he became unstoppable and expanded his empire, which included purchasing a half dozen banks, taking control of Italy's largest hotel chain, buying the Grand Hotel in Rome, the Maurice Hotel in Paris, as well as having his hand in over 500 corporations. By 1974, Michele Sindona was making millions of dollars for himself and others. Stay tuned for part two.